pray for your heart that your heart is receptive to the word of God. That the vessel God is going to use to minister to you, you don't see him as a mere man. You see him as an oracle, a man that is standing in the presence of God. God is going to be speaking to each and every one of us through him. Cool. So pray for yourself. Pray for yourself that the word of God takes root in your heart. Pray that you are not only hearers, but also doers of the word. No matter how difficult it may sound, pray for your heart. Pray that as you hear this word, it's something that becomes evident in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We always have this phrase. Just things down so that you can do what? Just things down so that you can do what? So I hope you have your pen, your paper, your tab, your pencil, your phone, whatever it is that you need to take down notes, please on them on. So with Jesus' joy, I'd like to call on our daddy in the Lord, Pastor Shades. Thank you so much, sir. Praise the Lord. How do I do this? This technology is very special. Oh, I see. Praise the Lord. There is no name so sweet. Do we know that song? There is no name so sweet like Jesus. Come on, help us. The Son of God. Thank you, worship team. I'm so happy that's what I'm singing, you know. That's it. We can rise to our feet to worship the Lord. That name. Like Jesus' name. The Son of God. Who died on the cross. Hallelujah. 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 One more time. There is no name so sweet like Jesus' name. The Son of God. Who died on the cross? Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Eternal Rock of Ages will thank you. The self-existing God will remember covenant and will fulfill promises. The one who has walked through time and seated in eternity. We give you the glory this morning. And we thank you from the very depth of our hearts. We acknowledge that you are God, the risen King. Thank you for your presence. Thank you because you are the host. 
And Lord, we are in your presence. Dear Lord, we ask that you will minister to our hearts even as we minister to you, Lord. That your name be glorified in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to thank God that I am seated in the presence of God. Because you guys can be very intimidating. And that's the honest truth. Pathology. Uh, I was with, uh, where is Dr. Michael? Where is he? <laughs> Dr. Michael, where are you? He's in the side way. He went to the toilet. <laughs> Dr. Michael, the new, uh, he graduated last week and I missed it. I'm not happy at all. But thank God I'm here today. You know what your pastor did to me, brother uh, President Joshua? He left me at the airport. That's what he did. He left me at the airport. And God is good. Ah, I suffered yesterday at the airport. I got to the airport in UK for 5 p.m. My flight was to get to Debrecen for 1.20. Because of the storm in Germany, I got to the place you got for me. Very nice place. I enjoyed it. I, I love Hungary. In London, they don't treat you like the way they treat you. Now, become for yourself. Thank you so much. So this morning, I think I got home for around half four. And then Dr. Michael said he's going to pick me up for quarter to nine. Imagine. And I couldn't sleep. So I slept around maybe 5.30 to wake up for 7 o'clock. Because I noticed about something about Michael, Dr. Michael. He keeps to time. And I want to, be, I want to show that I'm a, I'm a man of integrity. So if I doze off while preaching, uh, pray for me. I want to thank God for what God is doing in Deborah Sim. As a matter of fact, I am, we are planning in UK to bring as many youths to Deborah Sim. You know why? We want them to see that for them to come and see what God is doing with you guys. Because in London, they don't worship like you guys worship here. So we want to bring them, for them to see that God can use the youth in the United Kingdom as well. I want to thank God for uh, Dr. President Joshua for because I thought you guys will not invite me again since last time. So you must like me a little bit. So I'm here again. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 10. Pastor Shai, your send his greetings and um, is very, very mindful of what God is doing in Deborah Sin and in Budapest. Where's his um, brother Dusu? Did I get that right? Brother Dusu. God bless you, my brother. Ah, sorry, I might be new. Dr. Juicy, please be correcting me. All the way from Budapest. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you, Ripley. Yes, yes, yes. 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 I'm happy today that Dr. Bolaji has not um, told me off yet, but it's still too early for that. I might still get it before I leave. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Uh, Luke chapter 10. Ah, you guys are fast. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Verse 40. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Matter, matter. How many knows that when Jesus calls your name twice, 
the message must be serious. And for many of us, I think the Lord Jesus Christ has called our name more than twice. You are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. May the Lord bless the readings of his words into our heart. Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. The relevance of this account cannot be underestimated, particularly in these days that we are living. We are so troubled by many, many things. And for the younger generations, sometimes I look at my sons and I have to pray. I pray for long life so that I can do my best to help them. But the challenge that we are having, Daddy will attest to this, is that they know everything. So advice from wisdom has been overtaken by academics. Advice of the wise has been overtaken by the income that they bring home now. Because when your child rents is kind of earning almost the same amount of money that you are earning, then what do you have left to say? When they are driving a car that is better than your car, what do you want to tell them about life? So there's so much distraction in our world, particularly the younger generation, but your distraction is not that vivid. You cannot really say this distraction is a distraction because most of the distractions that we have today has benefits. I mean, if you are benefiting from distractions, who need the word of God? Amen? Amen. When you are living good, why do you need God? Well, this account, I believe, will minister to us because Mary did something in readiness for tomorrow. In readiness for what? Tomorrow. And I want to appreciate all of you. You've studied hard. And it's good to study hard. And, I mean, God loves us to be, um, to be best at what we do. But there are things in our lives that even our academics cannot handle tomorrow. And we need to be prepared. Now, if you look at this account, the Bible says that matter was troubled, distracted by many things. Whereas Mary sat at the feet of the Lord. Now, does that mean that we should not do anything for the Lord? Absolutely not. Let me try to give an example of distraction. So, uh, Dr. Bolaji says, Pastor Sherry, I want you to come and visit me. And I'm going to prepare you lunch. So what will she do? If I come to Dr. Balaji's house on the day, and I sat down and uh, Dr. Balaji says, ah, Sir, I'll be back. I want to go and buy the meat that I'm going to cook for you. Ah, Oh, sir, sorry. I need to clean the bathroom first. And I need to clean the kitchen and wash the plot, pot. And I have to go and buy some new dishes. And you, work, you invited me to come to your house for 10 o'clock. So what time would you have to host me? So distractions are the unnecessary things that Martha was doing while Jesus was in her house. It is not the fact that serving Jesus is wrong. The things that we do that we don't need to do are the things that causes distractions. And we need to be mindful of such things in our lives. It's like there's no end to what we are trying our best to balance and to juggle these days. And I feel so, um, uh, as, a, as a father myself, thank God, it burdens my heart to see what you guys had to deal with. Do you know what is so common in the United Kingdom amongst the youth? mental problems that 
it takes discernment of God to recognize. Many people, many youths today are depressed because they are carrying too many things. But let us look at Mary today. Do you have this unending nudge to perform all the time? You just want to perform to impress. Mary was not trying to impress Jesus. I mean, why, why would you even want to impress Jesus? He knows everything about you. But that was what Martha was doing, to impress the Lord at the expense of hearing the Lord. And we can be so involved in activities and all the people around us might see us that oh that brother that sister is always on the go but in our on the go we've neglected what really truly matters today we are going to investigate the lives of mary and Martha. what prepares you for what to come. We are celebrating today. Amen? Amen. We celebrated last week. Dr. Michael graduated last week and many other people. I am so sorry I couldn't make it last week, but I, I was determined to be here today. Praise the Lord. Amen. What prepares you for what to come? When we read the account in Luke 10 in isolation, we may not really appreciate the significance of the readiness of both sisters in the event that was to come. Even though Martha didn't do particularly well, he had enough, or probably captured enough, in that moment in our house that also prepared her for the future. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38, Luke 10, 38, we know Martha welcomed Jesus into our house. What a noble thing to do. For many of us, we've given our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And guess what we've done? We've invited him into our what? Into our house, into our heart. And he's there right now. But when was the last time you heard him? But you can always remember all the activities that you've done for Jesus. But the question, the true question is this. When was the last time you heard Jesus? In Revelation chapter 3, 20 says, we read, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he will be with me. So, it's not about preparing a meal for Jesus that matters to Jesus. What matters to Jesus is let's eat together. And when, when he says let's eat together, that means the word together. Hear me, and I will hear you. After all, he said, come, let us do what? Reason together. So don't just prepare food for him. Eat together. Dine together. Speak to him, and let him speak to you. Somebody once said, and I always appreciate this. I don't know whether you do this also. Say, when I'm praying, I can interrupt my prayer. You know why? Because I'm the one talking. So when I'm praying and I feel I want to drink, I can go and drink. But when he's talking, that is what matters the most. That is why, pay attention to this, my brothers and my sisters. When the word is being preached, God is the one that is speaking. And why would you want to interrupt when God speaks? So pay attention, brethren, to the word. And the reason why we must pay attention to the word is because he only hears his word when you pray. So if you don't hear him and you pray, you can't know his will. And if you do not know his will, he won't hear. This is the confidence that we have in him. That whenever we ask anything according to what? His will. How do I know his will if I don't stop with him? Amen. Are we getting somewhere? And that is what Mary had chosen to do. 
Matter, however, was distracted. Hallelujah. Uh, in Daniel chapter 3, 32, the Bible says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatterings. But the people who know their God shall be what? Strong and do exploit. How do you know him? Do you want to do great exploits for God? How many wants to do great exploits? How do you do it? What gives you the ability to do great exploits for him? You cannot be martyred to and do great exploits. You can only be merry to do great exploits. Because you need to know, know him. You need to know him. The danger about doing exploits without knowing him I, 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 I'm talking to us because we are a family if, if they have invited me maybe somewhere else I wouldn't be talking like this because we are family we, we can talk like this do you know that Samson was still doing great exploit for God not knowing in a few days time his eyes is going to be taken off the socket. We can be working for God. As a matter of fact, we can be working in the miraculous, laying hand on the sick and the sick recover. And we're doing great and mighty things in righteousness. But we are totally disconnected from the source. Samuel was still doing what? Wonderful things. So don't let your great exploit be the standard or the measure of your spiritual development because the giftings and the calling of God are without what? Repentance. King Saul was still king for a long, long time. But the anointing has shifted. I always say to myself, Dear Lord, please do not take the anointing and your grace from me. Because if you train a, 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 is it a parrot, very, very well, a parrot will preach. As a matter of fact, there are people who preach today and they don't have the Holy Ghost. The only difference is that the Bible says that the letter killeth, but the Holy Ghost, the Spirit giveth life. So what happens when trouble comes? In John chapter 11. This same Mary and Martha find themselves in an unpleasant situation. <laughs> you know what I used to pray when I was a young believer? Lord, do not let trouble come my, life, come my way. Uh, but I've learned. The trouble is not the problem. Is the weight of the person in Christ. Elijah said this this way, and I love it. He said, Before God, in whom I what? Stand. Have you ever thought about that, uh, Brother Joshua? Before God, in whom I stand, there will be no what? So you have to have a standing to declare. And to have a standing to declare, you must know the person in whom you are standing before. So Mary and Martha found themselves in an unpleasant, horrible and terrible situation. And nothing else would have prepared them on how to deal with this problem. But thank God for Mary and a little bit of thanks to Martha. At least Martha still invited Jesus. But some of us, we don't even, we're not even serving him. Neither are we even reading his word or paying attention to him. At least Martha invited the Lord. In John chapter 11 from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha, 
It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. And I want you to pay attention to this message that the sisters sent to Jesus. If we get the revelation of this letter, so many burdens will be lifted supernaturally. Watch what is, they said carefully. First, in their message to Jesus, I don't know who sent the message, I don't know whether they wrote it, but the message got to Jesus. But the first thing is, they called him what? Lord. You need to know him to call him Lord. Amen? You need to know that he has authority over everything to call him Lord. That's the first thing that they did. They said, Lord, you have authority over sickness. We know that you can heal. They were so sure. They said, two, watch what they said carefully. The one you love is sick. How do we pray when our loved one has a problem? These sisters, God forgive me, they are too smart. They are Nigerians. They have to be Nigerians. Because no one can do this except you're in Nigeria. I'm sorry if you're not a Nigerian in this place. They said, the one you love. They didn't say the one I love. Did you see that? They didn't say, our brother, the only son of our father, is sick. They put the responsibility of their brother's problem on Jesus. And oftentimes when we pray, we think we love our brother more than Jesus. Mary and Martha love Lazarus, no doubt, but they recognize by reason of revelation that no matter how much they love Lazarus, there is one who loves Lazarus more than them. So I want us to pray from this day forward with wisdom. Don't you ever pray again taking ownership of anything. Don't take ownership of your wife when all of you get married, all you young men and women. Women when you marry a man and man when you marry a woman. I just thought I need to add that a little bit. Amen to that? Amen. Don't take responsibility for them. Love them as Christ demands. But when trouble comes, hand it over to Jesus. Because Jesus loves them the most. That is what they did. The one you love is sick. Meaning, Lazarus Though you are our brother, but it is not our responsibility because we cannot love you like Jesus does. You know, one of the problems I have when I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ is I love Jesus, I was afraid of God. I always think, seriously, I'm being honest, I always think God cannot be approached when I got saved. But when you, when you read Jesus, he's so loving, Jesus is so kind. So I, in my little head, I gravitated towards Jesus and I just don't want to have anything to do with God until, <laughs> see how the very things, until I read John 3, 16. Until I read when Jesus himself say, said, God is what? God is love. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. God is what? God is love. Hmm. But when the message got to Jesus Christ, in John eleven six, now this is the paradox of our Christian walk with Jesus Christ. You know why I'm able to teach like this? You want me to be very honest with you? Why I'm able to teach like this? When I came to this place the last time, 
and I saw the way you guys were teaching the word. I, I, I went back to London and said, God, I need help. So I have to study like a doctor, <laughs> like a pharmacist. Because I want to put one over you guys so that when I go back to London, I will say, ah, the doctors and all these students, they even respect this man from um, a town called Oshu in Nigeria. Uh, God will give you a revelation for non-Nigerians where I came from. Okay, uh, in John eleven six, the Bible says, so when he heard that he was sick, now this is what I don't understand. He stayed two more days in the place where he was. The one whom you love is sick. And then you stay two more days. My sister, is that nice? Is that fair? If somebody writes me a letter and says the person whom I love is sick, I will drop the microphone right now. I will get on the plane. I'm back to London. That is what I call love. Jesus stayed <laughs> two more days until the boy died. Hmm. God will give us understanding. Amen. That doesn't seem to be an attribute of somebody who is a God of love. I don't think so. How many knows? You guys might not know, but daddy will know and mommy will know. I wasn't born again from the womb. There's a song that we used to sing by Tina Turner. How many know that song? Ah! Gee, you don't know the song? Ah, that shows I am old. Daddy too is older, mommy. My mom. So you don't know what love's got to do with it? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Who needs a heart when a heart can be what? Can be broken. Ah, doctor. <laughs> you need to do deliverance. <laughs> yeah, that song makes sense. Naturally speaking. This, you could imagine if this had gotten into the hearing of Mary and Martha that Jesus heard about our situation and guess what he did? He just stayed as if, as if he doesn't care. Someone is going through something today in this place. And you're thinking Jesus doesn't care because your timing does not align with his response. Find courage. Let me jump over myself. Sometimes God wants to extend your revelation of him. Mary and Martha knew Jesus as the God that heals. And many of us, God is trying to expand our capacity to see another facet of him. They know he can heal, but they don't know that he can also raise the dead. They also know, I need to jump over myself, that he is the resurrection and the life. Because Mary and Martha, particularly Martha, said, ah, we know that um, you are able to do it in the last days when the dead in Christ uh, are caught up in the heavens. But for a man to be dead for four days, this one you can't do. You can heal the sick, you can open the eyes of the blind. You can heal the crippled. We've heard about you. The woman with the issue of blood. We've heard about you. But this one. Dead for four days. And they said. Don't even go there because. It's already smelling. Let me say this to us. My brothers and my sisters. Mary and Martha said. Exactly the same thing. When Jesus showed up finally. They said to Jesus. If you had been here, guess what would have happened to our brother? He would have lived. 
But because of you, your, they were being careful, even though everything was done in the atmosphere of worship. But what they are literally saying is, why didn't you come on time? Why did you delay? Because we know that if you were here, all you needed to have done is to lay your hands on my brother and our brother would have lived. There are things that we know of God right now that God has done for us. And we are using that as a yardstick of what God can do. The Bible says that he is able to do what? Exceedingly. Abundantly. Above. More than what we can ever ask Asking is okay. But what about thinking? Have you ever used the power of your mind to think before? Do you know that as we are here right now, you can think of yourself living in a mansion in Hollywood? That is how God has blessed us with the ability to think. And God says, if you can think it, I will exceed it. So the just thing that Mary and Martha knows of Jesus was the fact that Jesus can lay hands on the sick, but can he call out the dead from the grave? There are things that we are going through right now, we think it's outside the scope of Jesus. There are things that we are trusting God for, but we are not really trusting him for it because in deep in our mind, because of the measure of our experience with him, we think it, he can't do it. But why can't we just be like David? Do you know how difficult it is for somebody to kill a lion and a bear? But guess what they said? He said, I've killed a lion and I've killed a bear. He enlarged his capacity to believe God for anything. And he said, you Goliath, because you're too tall, you're too big, you're going to be an easy kill. And guess what? It was an easy kill. He enlarged his capacity to believe God for more. The strength to believe God for more is not just based on past testimony. The strength to believe God for more is when you receive fresh manna on handing. Uh, how many minutes have I got to? 12 minutes. Thank you so much, sir. Because we've been taught if they give you 30 minutes, use 25. Is that what you do as well, my brother? Because the reason why I want to, <laughs> I'll tell you why I asked that question. You see, your guy, the top on the left, <laughs> she's, she's, she and time, they are friends. So that's why I'm being very, very careful. 12 minutes. Many of us, including myself, you know what I love? I pray for power. I, I love to pray for power. Ah. But one thing I've learned through this account, which one would you rather have? Love or power? Why love? Which one would you have, uh, rather have? Love or power? Power. 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 I like your honesty. So we rather have love. It's better to have love. You know why? Why? The manifestation of love is power. He said, the one whom you love is sick. When the one who loved Nazareth showed forth, he expressed his power. We are asking for power rather than for us to be asking for Jesus. The more Jesus, the more power. Amen? I speak to us today that there is more of God that we know not. And that is why faith becomes crucial. Faith is the assurance of the things that we hope for. The evidence of things not seen. And how do you see what you can't see? You see it by the word of the living God. Why? Because faith cometh by what? By, and hearing what? How do you hear the word of God? You become a Mary. So the more you become a Mary, the Bible says the love of God will be established 
in our hearts. When you see people who love Jesus Christ, you will notice something about them. They do more of the miraculous without ascribing any glory to themselves. But the people who only ask for power, God will use them, but guess what they do? They take that glory unto themselves. Seek for love. Power will be automatic. Seek for power alone. We don't want to be a situation whereby Jesus will say on that last day, oh, we will speak first, but not us. But some will speak first. We did this. We healed the sick. We raised the dead. We cast out demons in your name. And then Jesus will say what? You know why he's saying, depart, I never knew you, because all they live their life to do is to seek for power without seeking for love. And who is love? Jesus. And two, equally important, just because you've not seen it happen before, use the strength of what has happened in the past to trust him for what you have not experienced today. And if you are to be a Martha or a Mary, whereby you have the extreme view of Jesus, which is good. Some of us have the extreme view that is from being born again and then to the resurrection. They capture the, the, the two extreme, but neglecting the in-between. The in-between of what God can do in this earth realm before we transition to heaven. There's so many great things that we can do here on earth. Don't just hold on to the extreme. Yes, one day there's going to be a sound, a trumpet, and the, and the, and the, and the dead in Christ will rise first and then we will be caught up in the heavens. I believe that is so close than ever before. But before then, there are so many things that he wants to do in the in-between. He still wants to raise the dead in between. He still wants to set the captives free in between. He still wants to make somebody and cause such a person from the dunghill and cause such a person to sit amongst kings. He still wants to make you a showcase to the world of what he's able to do. Amen. He still wants to use you to lead nations, to advise people in high places. If you can just believe him for it. And not only that. Whatever it is. The situation that you might think it is impossible. Or you might think it's too late. Is the resurrection. And is the life. And it's not when we meet with him. He is now. And the Bible says, tells us. That that same Holy Spirit. Dwells within us. We are the temple. Of God. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Without God, we will run through five minutes. See, I told you. I told you. I need to be careful. Let me behave myself. Hallelujah! Amen. Let's rise to our feet. Praise the Lord. God is good. Have we received something this morning? Can I still come back next time? Praise the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord in any way that we have made him too small in our eyes. In many ways that we've magnified our situation above the word of the living God. Let's repent. God is faithful. Lord, we are sorry. We are sorry that we have used our experiences as a yardstick to believe you and we have limited the Holy One of Israel. Have mercy on us. And Lord, by grace, we receive revelation today to trust you for more. That your delay is not denial. It's for you to show forth your glory just like when your disciples, Lord, ask you, why was this person born blind? And you said it's for the glory of God to be revealed. Father, I pray that let your glory be revealed 
in any situation that your sons and daughters, including myself, might be going through right now. Let your glory be revealed. That the world may know that you are God. Father, we trust to love you more than ever before. To, to hear you speak to us. And we believe that as we hear you, we thank you because everything becomes like shadow in the light of your glory. And Lord, we declare that we love you, Jesus. And we thank you for we are saved, we are delivered. You've tattooed our names in the palms of your hands. And we are seated with you in the heavenly places. Far above all principalities and powers, and rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness even in the heavenly places. Thank you because we are yours. We are above and not beneath. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. We pray and God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, sir.